Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology from Sheila Fun. In today's video, our assistant, lovely assistant, who doesn't say a word. This guy, we don't even have to feed him. He gets a zero for class participation. Exactly, he gets a zero, but he gets a hundred for just hanging out and for just showing off his bones. He gets 100 for that. So in today's pose, we'll be explaining the anatomy strengthening for Navasana another core strengthening pose. What I mean, what another foundational pose. So from here, I will have Ashley bring her, bend her knees and bring her feet onto the mat. Good. And she'll sit up nice and tall, nice and tall, lengthen through the crown, drawing the shoulders down away from the ears. Then I'll have her come up to the tippy toes on her feet, tippy toes, and then she'll Use her right hand to lift her right knee up. Just lift the knee, yep. Yeah. And then her left hand to lift the left knee up. So we'll start here in balance. This is the beginning of Navasana, boat pose. And right here, this is great for some of us to start here. I'll ask Ashley to lift her chest, draw her elbows down. That engages our core. So right here, this is the perfect start for Navasana. Makes it accessible. And if a person has a difficult time balance, they could always lower one leg to the earth. Inhale. On the exhale, I'll ask Ashley to extend her right leg out, left leg out. <laughs> right leg and left leg together. Right. And uh, I think this will also be a good thing to touch on with the anatomy with the um, tailbone, Peter. Because one time you told me sometimes people have a different position of their tailbone, which makes this a little harder. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to step off camera to get a blanket um, for, okay, or I'm getting that uh, luxury uh, VIP service here. Um, but so for me, I um, was a snowboarder and I'm a sphere now. And um, I fractured my tailbone when snowboarding. Now, maybe it's a result of that old injury, or maybe it's just my anatomy. I will defer to Peter with 25 years experience as an anatomy expert to, um, you know, sort of add um, depth to this comment. But basically when I do bow pose, um, it feels uncomfortable on my tailbone. So a cushion helps. I, nothing we should do, we, we're, doing yoga to feel better. So if something feels like it hurts, we shouldn't do it. This is not, no one's gonna win a trophy. We're not going to the yoga Olympics. There's no point to push yourself um, when it hurts. There's no benefit to that. So we can make adjustments like this blanket, or if even that doesn't work, um, you know, there's other maybe modifications you can share with us, like maybe just um, like this is a modification for someone. But anyway, so I'm gonna come back to how you told me, then you said one leg out and the other leg out. Yep. This blanket really makes a huge difference. So what Ashley was explaining is that sometimes we have a coccyx as well, tailbone, sacrum, coccyx, this moves. So just plant your feet down for a second while I just explain this real quick. So sometimes if you've had an injury, sometimes our little coccyx or our little tailbone can be pointed to the left or point it to the right, which can cause discomfort or pain, and even cause your gait to walk a little funny. So just know, so what Ashley's discussing is that maybe her sacrum, which is here, or her coccyx or tailbone is maybe pointed to the right or left, or tucked under, right? So I would recommend doing a lot of malasana, or yogic squat to open that up before she gets into boat pose to make it a little bit more comfortable. It stretches your groin muscles out, also stretches your hips out. So then I'll have her sit back. Can I just ask a question? Um, can it ever move? Like, like, do, like, like yes. doing squats yes. that can, yes. so our um, bones, like we actually can as as over time fused. make an adjustment on our stuff. As long as it's not fused. See, like your sacrum is fused, it's stuck. Mm -hmm. You're not moving that. That's, in, that's like moving, trying to move a brick building. But your tailbone, as long as it's not fused, if you stretch the muscles enough, you can actually make some changes there. So, um, as we Asians already rock, rock your brain while we're live and um, uncut, but um, so, you know, the benefits 
of yoga can really be to help skeletal alignment. 100%. Wow. Yoga is all about skeletal alignment. Wow. Yoga is all about spinal health. Wow. Yoga is about spinal health. I'm going to say that again. Yoga is all about spinal health. Why do we go to a chiropractor? Spinal health. That's what, yoga is all about lengthening the spine. Lengthening the spine. Always starting with mountain pose. Always starting in Tadasana. Lifting up through the crown. Pulling the belly in to tuck that and hold that. And then getting into the posture. Right? So, I would have her do, if she's complaining about this and she wants to use a blanket, it's awesome. But if you don't have a blanket, if you're in a fake place where you don't have access to props, one thing to do is to get into malasana. Or child's pose. Or, like we explained, frog pose. There's many poses to open up the inner thighs and affect change on our sacrum and tailbone. So I'll have Ashley sit back on her, on her blanket. And from here, this might be perfect for her, this pose, for her engage. So I'm going to have her lift up to the crown of the head. Squeeze the knees together. Take her hands, reach under her, the back of the knees. Good. I'm going to have her lean back just a bit, come up to the tippy toes of her feet. So right here, she's already, her core is already engaged. See, her chest is nice and open. Then I'm going to have her lift her right leg. Lift her left leg, keep the knees bent. Good, and she's already starting to shake. Drawing the shoulders away from the ears, drawing the chest, lifting the heart, extending the arms directly out in front, palms facing in towards one another, lifting the hands. Lifting up through the chest a bit more. Now, this is perfect for Ashley because of her sacrum, but I'm going to ask her to do something a little advanced by slowly extending both legs towards me. I'm gonna cheat a little and just, yeah. Is it really? Get really it. gets your core. Okay. Now lift your heart. Just hold it for a second. Lift your heart. <laughs> lift your arms. It's Can also mind over matter. Hold when you uh, hold the legs. Hold the legs. Sort of hold your legs and lift your heart. Lose focus. You get wobbly. Hold your legs and lift your heart. Just okay, hold, hold my legs. And just lift your heart. That's it. Okay. Now close your eyes. Lift your right arm. <laughs> It's also interesting, there's like an element of balance to it. Because I, I find it harder when my eyes are closed. And I feel you like start here. I'll see. Lift the right arm, lift the left arm. See, and I have okay, a belly. See, now Peter's just showing off. No, I, and I have a <laughs> belly. So it's about balance. And it's about trusting yourself. I just needed a little competition. And then That's now it, I'm going to show off. <laughs> Beautiful. So, benefits. Stay right there. Benefits. Strengthening. The benefits are you're strengthening your lower back, strengthening the core muscles. You're getting into the pelvic floor. You're strengthening your quads. You're strengthening your lower abdominals, strengthening the upper abdominal, strengthening the chest, toning the legs, toning the hamstrings. That's why I said it's one of those foundational poses for strength. So start where you are comfortable and work your way to the full expression of the posture. And your full expression will be different from Ashley's, different from mine. Namaste. Namaste.